I didn't know you had roles, first of all. Congratulations. Thank you. When did you get back to the Philippines? Last April 8th. Yes. April 8th. Yes. So right after we won, the next day we flew back to the Philippines. Okay, first things first. We do know that the Jessup is uh, the oldest, most prestigious uh, competition, moot court competition of its kind. And uh, the Philippines has won thrice. UP Law has won twice, thanks to you guys. You beat Ateneo by one time. <laughs> But what was the case, hypothetical case, um, that you guys won? Can you tell us? So it, it's about a, a fictional case about two countries. Um, the, the topics primarily dealt with statelessness. So one country decided to render some of the protesters or activists stateless. Um, and there are questions of whether or not that complies with international law. And then there's a second part to the problem, yeah. which I think was Chen focused more on. Which deals with the recognition of a nationality conferred by a state, because we see now that there are states who grant nationality on the basis of investment, with no um, residence required, no existence of familial ties, and how would other states recognize that nationality. So in the hypothetical scenario, there was a state which refused to recognize a nationality conferred through investment. And then the last issue was on the powers of the UN Security Council to impose binding legal obligations on the state. So on our the quarter rounds, octo rounds, semifinals, up until the final rounds, we were arguing for the respondent, the Kingdom of Remisha, mm -hmm. which wanted the nationality to be recognized and which also wanted to retain the right to deprive nationality. It was, uh I know you said it's all fictional, but it sounds like you're taking from real life examples yeah. here. I mean, we could easily name some you know, yeah. real Country. life examples that, we could apply, that we, this could apply to. But mm -hmm. uh, talk us through the training. Mm -hmm. What was it like? So, how, how do you how train do you for something train? like this? Yeah. So, we're given the case months ago, mm -hmm. um, and the first part of the competitions are written memorial. So, you're supposed to make written pleadings where you argue for both sides. So, you have a presentation for both sides. So a lot of that deals with research and writing skills. And after you submit them, then you have the oral um, part, which is you argue in front of judges. Um, we had the national rounds first. So to be able to compete in the international rounds, you have to qualify. So we had the national rounds, and a few teams from the Philippines was able to qualify to the international rounds. Mm -hmm. And then we trained for the international rounds separately. Wow. So most of the training comes with just giving the speeches again and again, asking judges to ask us questions and practice answering various questions since we, the amount of questions that judges can ask is basically or virtually unlimited. So we have to prepare for the possi different possible questions being asked. You beat like 600 teams. Mm. Wow. Were you the, uh, were you seen as really the team to beat coming into the tournament mm. prior or were you an underdog and then, you know, after a couple of, you said of course it was a process leading to to that actual day, was there, was there a big turnaround at some point? I think definitely UP College of Law has a certain reputation in the mm. international moot court competition uh, domain. Mm -hmm. But then, because in the national rounds, we didn't win championship. Mm -hmm. So we were only um, placed at the third, we were only third place. So we really had something to prove mm -hmm. on the international level that still UP College of Law can still dominate um, other moot court teams. So we were kind of the underdog in terms of the other Philippine teams, but in the international um, field, I think UP Law has always uh, maintained a good reputation. What a strategy. You're law students, right? They seem so nice too. They are. They could they argue they any so side <laughs> of the, any topic. You won't strategy. see them coming. Yeah, that's no, but, okay, law school is really hard. It's an extra four years plus the bar. So it's an extra five years. And I was under the impression, at least my friends that went to law school, had no life. How did you find time you to, really to, train, <laughs> to train for this competition? And apparently, there's also other teams competing in other competitions. So there's quite a lot of you. Where do you find, first of all, the, the time for this extracurricular activity? Um, and two, are you in it? Because this looks good on a lawyer's resume. Um, I'm, I'm genuinely curious. How, how much bragging rights does this win get you on your CVs? Definitely, it's super demanding of your time and energy. Mm -hmm. For example, our classes will end at, let's say, 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. So we start training at 9, 
up until 12 midnight if we're lucky, but it could last until like 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. And that will go on for days, weeks, and months up until wow. the international rounds. But um, I think the key really is you have to like love it. You mm -hmm. have to enjoy the process because then it would really like drain you. So I think for us, at least we had the benefit of like really enjoying the process. Okay. I think aside from the prestige, there is indeed a lot of prestige for um, law firms and for future careers mm -hmm. or career opportunities if you do moot court. I think you also just enjoy the process of, it's the same problem, you're talking about the same thing again and again, but you seem to learn something new each time you do this, your speeches. There's something, a question that you didn't have an answer for that you're able to find an answer to or you conduct research for a day to find an answer just for one question. I think that those like small moments, I think makes you stay or continue to like move mm -hmm. course. Did you recruit amongst yourselves, the team, the composition, tell us mm -hmm. about it. We, we had to try out oh. to be part of the oh. team. Okay. So back in October, the organization in UP Law, which handles the moot court competitions, held a tryout for the Jessup team in particular. And so the maximum amount of members is five. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, all five of us made it to the team. And we have our coaches, Prof. Marian Vitug and Prof. Ramel Cassis, to thank for allowing us, affording <laughs> us this opportunity and bringing us to the championship. So were you debaters in your past mm. life, maybe mm. in high school? Yes. Because I can't imagine mm -hmm. wanting to I do... I can't reconcile. He looks so nice. <laughs> you can, yeah. must be a and, champion and debater and in high school. And her voice is like so gentle. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you two are both have very calming presence. You don't look like you're sharks in the court. So I was a debater um, from high yeah. school, um, even a little bit in grade school, and I went to college, university debating, and then I got to moot court. Um, so I, I had some debate experience, although you had to train being less aggressive since the <laughs> okay. format and the style is very different from debating. And yeah. Shenzhen, you? Were you a debater too? No, I had no debating experience. Mm -hmm. But then I think the advantage is in mooting, you're not necessarily there to argue against the opponent, okay. but more of to help the panelists and the judges to understand your point of view. Right. So it's more of like whispering into their ear that this is the right argument, this is how you should see it, as opposed to like, no, you're, you're wrong, I'm correct. Okay, okay. What's the most important element in moot court in the, mm -hmm. whilst you're in the tournament? Uh, is it the research? Is it being able to think on your feet? Is it being to argue your point uh, factually? What's, well, what do you think is the most important element here? Or is it being, just being articulate? I think it's two parts. So you have to have the research. I think a charm will only get you so far. You have mm -hmm. to be able to actually know the answers to the questions. But because the judges have, uh, can ask a lot of things, you also have to combine that research with quick thinking skills. So you need the mastery of the topic. Mm -hmm. So you can adjust based on what's asked from you. So I think it's both research and quick thinking that I think yeah. is the key to winning. Yeah. So, so what would your strategy be if you were asked a question you didn't know the answer to, for instance? Is there a, is there a framework <laughs> that you go by? It's always an option to admit that your research has not led you to that, oh, to an okay. answer to that question. However, we haven't had the opportunity to invoke that you know, concession, <laughs> thankfully. Thankfully. <laughs> yes. But I think we have the research to thank for that. We had months of preparation, mm -hmm. and we really tried to um, foresee every question that will be thrown at us or every argument there is nice. to be made. Well, that's why you yeah. were champions. Mm -hmm. Wait, one quick question, because uh, my intro says, Team Captain Ignacio Lorenzo Villarreal, that's you, and then Oralist Chinzen Viernes. But I also know that, Nacho, you won Best Oralist. Can you tell us what? an oralist is. Are you both oralists then, apart from you also being the team captain? So I also awarded the best oralist in the championship mm -hmm. round. Um, so in the team, there are a maximum of four oralists, a minimum of two. So the oralists are the members of the team who would speak and be the ones to present in front of the judges. Mm -hmm. So in each round, you'd have two. So in the final round, it was me and Chen Zen. Um, and then in, when we're in another, the other side, it would be me and our teammate Pauline for the international rounds. So the, the oralist job is just to present the research. They're the ones who answer the questions, mm -hmm. the judges, and try to persuade the judges in the oral um, proceedings. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure the UP community is very proud. When you got back, was there a celebration? Like, a bon a bonfire? bonfire. <laughs> <laughs> Parade, <laughs> heroes oh. welcome. Well, there, there was a welcoming 
at the Salubong airport. At the airport. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. And then we have a dinner scheduled on Friday Wonderful. to thank everyone who helped us get here. So. And is this the last of you guys as a team, or do you have more competitions na mm. kayo din as a, as this group, or this uh, is it? The teams change every year and per moot court competition. So this is the last of our team, mm -hmm. but for those who are still on third year or second year of law school, they can still Try join in again. the next year. Yes. Okay. You know, you have big shoes to fill. The last team that won the Jessup Cup from UP Law, one of them was Chito yes. Gascon, yes. Uh, yes, the yes, late Chito Gascon, of course, mm -hmm. who went on to become Commissioner of Human Rights here. What is the dream for you guys mm -hmm. when you graduate? So I think so hard. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's so hard. Um, I, I, I do want, uh, I, I, I'm quite interested in international law, so I think that's one possible option, um, find career opportunities in the realm of international law. Although I also am very into litigation, so that's another possibility. Although we don't want to decide yet. Yeah. Um, Take your time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Chinzen? Chinzen? Usually the traditional approach is to go into private practice or a law firm for the first f first two years. But my, I'm leaning towards going into government practice, maybe in Congress or in the judiciary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really want to try to like go into the system, see what's in there, see what needs to be changed, and figure out what my role could be there. So. That's the beautiful. Looks bright. They definitely yeah. need you there. Yeah. The future looks bright <laughs> with having you two It there. could use a moot court winner in there, huh? <laughs>